Down Friday Night is sponsored by these local businesses. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Touchdown Friday Night, one of the largest high school football shows in Tennessee and Virginia. I'm Kenny Hawkins, along with my tag team partner, Nick Dugan. Tonight, we got 17 games on tap from Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia, which closed out their regular season tonight. However, in Northeast Tennessee, it was playoff time, so a loss at this point ended your season. But before we get this party started, here's Nick with the Me Tractor Top Tackle, and it's a good one of the night. <laughs> Top tackle of the night is brought to you by Mead Tractor. Kenny, it's a very good one. Science Hill taking on Maryville over at Kermit Titton oh. Stadium. On the kickoff, is the top of Baylor necessary oh. hits Jackson Llewellyn out of nowhere. And yes, Kenny, that is the mouthpiece flying out from under oh. his helmet. I mean, talk about blindsided. Baylor necessary lays an absolute hit for our top tackle of the night. There it is. One more time. Maribel guy should have had his signal on, and maybe that would have happened. <laughs> it's like a back truck. All right, thanks, Nick. The Maribel Rebels came in with four losses on the season, which is not typical for them. If the toppers could avoid looking at the emblem on the helmet, they might have a chance to beat the Rebels for the first time since the 1940s. Toppers hoping home field advantage would help pull off the win. First quarter, Maribel running back Price Davis, priceless, takes it. From a couple of yards out, Maribel led 7-0 after one. Second quarter is 14-3 Maribel. When the Rebels strike again, Will Jones to Davis on a throwback pass for a touchdown and just like that, 21-3. Rebels capped the scoring with under a minute to go in the first half. Gage Ledoux scores it, and it was 28-3 at the break. Third quarter, Spencer Taylor drops back. He's going to find Josiah McCann in the end zone for the score, and that would cut Maryville's lead to 35-10 as we go to the board. They went on to win tonight, a big win for Maryville. I'm proud of these guys, especially proud of these seniors. Uh, didn't play, you know, they really run the ball well on us tonight. We were not able to stop them. So, uh, but great football team we just played, but uh, proud of our kids and proud of how they fought and got better each day. And uh, just a bunch of good kids and I'll miss them. So once again, Science Hill season comes to an end. Losing to Maribel tonight, 42 to 16. Also tonight, Gatlinburg Pittman. Are you kidding me? Ooh. They win 70 to nothing. Let's head to Knoxville to the home of the Dogs, where Bearden hadn't hosted a playoff game since 2015. Taking on Dobbins Bennett tonight, and they would make it count early. Already up 14 nothing right before the half. Quarterback Drew Parrott flicks it to the end zone where Sam Tums. They probably needed some Tums tonight. Makes a terrific catch. After that, it was 21-0 Bulldogs at the break as we go to the scoreboard. All Bearden tonight. They ended Dobbins Bennett's season 27-0 and Rockwood over Jellico tonight, 28-21. In Class 4A, Elizabethan was playing host to Knox Carter in the opening round of the playoffs tonight. The Cyclones offense comes out firing. Rhett Slagle hits Luke Whaley for the long gainer inside the Green Hornets 10-yard line. Jariah Griffin caps off the drive, running it out of the Wildcat formation for 7-0 Cyclone lead. In the second quarter, Slagle hits another long bomb. This time, Eli Blevins to set up first and goal for Elizabethan. Zeth Mullins would rumble into the end zone a couple of plays later. Cyclones led it 14 to nothing at that point. The Elizabethan defense was doing his part as well. Zach Wallen. Picking off a Green Hornet pass here in the second quarter, Elizabethan would roll from there, winning tonight easily in the first round. That final 38 to nothing. And also it was Jefferson County beating Cleveland tonight, 44-36. Over to Powell, the Panthers made it to the semifinals last season. If they want to make it back and even further, first they would have to get past Tennessee high to the third quarter we go. Deuce Rogers hands it off to Connor Wheeler, who gets popped right at the goal line, but is able to get in Pater to make a 28-7 Panthers. Next drive for Powell. Rogers going to call his own number. He weaves, bobs his way. 48-yard quarterback run. Look at this. Uh -oh. Nice as it gets to the outside. It was 35. That's, that's a big quarterback. 35-7 to the fourth quarter now. New quarterback in for the Panthers. Freshman Jalon Benjamin. He's going to hand it off to Keyshawn Jackson, and he's gone. He'll find Pater. No issue. It was 42-7 as we go to the board. 
That final tonight, Tennessee High season comes to an end 42 to 14. Morristown West over Knox Hall's 35 14. Nick. Kenny, thanks. It was a familiar time of year for the Greenville Green Devils as they faced, well, a familiar opponent in the opening round of the playoffs. Knox Fulton and Greenville have faced off in the last two seasons, and the Green Devils, well, they won both of those matchups pretty easily. We start this one picking up into the second quarter. The Green Devils already up 14 to nothing over the Falcons. Fulton wouldn't let it stay at zero for long, though. Albert Johnson gets handed off the ball, and he just manages his way into the painted area. It's now 14 to six. Later in the quarter, the Falcons have some trouble. Fourth down, they're going for the punts. This is going to be way too high. It forces the fumble. Zach Chrisman running the rest of the way in. That's a scoop and score. 27 to eight is the score. Next drive, Dexter Molden attempts to pass. It's Hayden Goad, former 10-11 player of the week. A pick six. He runs into the end zone. It's now 34 to eight. Greenville in the third quarter. The Devils, they are becoming unstoppable. Bryson Myers on the inside give. Goes right up the gut and scores 47 to 8. The Green Devils are pouring it on. The Falcons trying to put up a fight. Molden goes long, and this one is caught by Latavian Wilson. He's able to get in there, but too little, too late as Greenville goes on to win this one 48 14. You know, excited for this group of uh, uh, this football team to come out here against a you know an opponent that their record don't speak what kind of football team they are. There are a lot of athletes that can really run. Excited how we played tonight, be able to uh, get some the, on the scoreboard in three different ways: special teams, uh, you know, offense and defense. So excited about how our team played tonight. Obviously, uh, carrying over from our season, undefeated, but. You know, really trying to win every week and go play by play. So we just got to stay consistent. We can't get complacent. We just got to do the little things every week, every day in practice. And I feel like everything should take care of itself. Uh, they win in a big way tonight, 48-14. As I mentioned, moving on to the second round, Sevier County top seed winning Knox over Knox Central tonight. Excuse me, 51 to 20. We head now to Knox Wet. One seed as well in 5A. Undermanned Blazers team coming in as the four seed tonight. The Trailblazers with the ball first, but they didn't have it for long. Luke Jenkins back to pass. He's pressured and then stripped of the football. The Rebels would recover deep in Daniel Boone territory, and it didn't take them long to capitalize. First play from scrimmage. Marshawn Bowers takes the handoff, cuts it back outside, racing into the end zone. A little stop and go for the first score of the game. It's 7 nothing in favor of the home squad. The Blazers, they would settle in. They're still within seven. The coach calls for Fake punt, Dalton oh, Cloyd. He's got nowhere to go, though, and so he's going to be taken mm. down. That is a turnover on downs. Well, a couple minutes later, the Rebels make him pay again. Hunter Dance. Oh, Dance. Dang. Do a little dance. Goes Dang. up to David Drada, laying out for the catch. It's a terrific one in the end zone for a score as we head to the board. Knox West blanking Daniel Boone, ending the Trailblazer season tonight, 34 to zip. York Institute all over Eagleton Academy, 61 to 7. Over in Oliver Springs, the Bobcats hosting a playoff game for the second straight season. And they're going to start this one off, <coughs> excuse me, against North Green. Uh, Liam, Bo Liam Boke with a long pass. Jackson Jett, you got, and with a name like Jackson okay. Jett, you got to come down with that one. Okay. Flying in with a 22-yard grab. Next play, Boke scrambles to his left and tosses it to Dakota Adams. He's in the corner of the end zone, toe-tapping and scoring. The Bobcats take an early 7-0 lead. In the second quarter, it's Jett. This time, he's going to run it in himself, cruising for a score. The Bobcats, they win big over North Green tonight as we head to the scoreboard. 48 to nothing. Chucky Doak losing to Alcoa as their season comes to a close 56 to six. Hey, that's seven down. We still have got eight more to go. We finish off Northeast Tennessee before moving to the action at Southwest Virginia. But first, the Unicoi County Band to help take us to break.
Welcome back to the show, everyone. At Hampton tonight, Polk County led the Bulldogs 1914 to the break. Hampton would take the lead with Dominic Burleson. Where we heard that name before? Mm, Plows in from three yards out this week's player of the week. After a Polk County turnover, Hampton would then go to the air. Dylan Trivet finds Gino Carrico on the big gainer. And then Burleson goes in from 10 yards out to increase the Hampton lead. Trivet would then look down the field, find Elijah McKinney for the 30-yard pickup. Trivet would then finish off the drive with a quarterback sneak. Hampton, look at that. Nice down the field, nice pitch and catch right here. And then you're going to have Trivet take it in. Hampton, I mean, they, they fell behind early. They would come back Big and win down. as we go to the board. They advance that final tonight, 36 to 19. Anderson County over Sullivan East, 49 to zip. On Roan Mountain, it was Greenback taking on the Cloudland Highlanders. The Cherokees would strike first as Caden Lawson finds Brady Allison in the flat. And he flat outruns the Cloudland defense to the end zone. And that would make the score eight to nothing. Nobody kicks up there. Mm -hmm. The Highlanders would then march down the field and Bryce Birchfield. You know there's a Birchfield on the team. It's, yeah, it's always it's like Kingsport in a sense ball. Finds Austin Caraway for the touchdown pitch and catch. Greenback then struck again. Lawson launches one deep to Cooper Williams for the nice reception. After a Cloudland turnover, Lawson would then hook up with Connor James for the score to make it 20 to the six right there. But this tonight, basically all greenback. They went on to win ending Cloudland season by the final uh, 41 to 20. It was also Bledsoe County over South Green 42 to 21. Nick. Kenny and Irwin Unicoi County trying to drop the anvils on the road runners of Austin East <laughs> after the visitors hit on the home run ball. You see what I did there? I like they're that. In the end zone, they're in the red zone, excuse me. Shane Cherry, quick slant to Condis Cherry. That's a touchdown, 6 nothing. They didn't kick either. Blue Devils going on the long drive in the first quarter. A few big third down conversions. This time, Colby Jones to Chris Chavez. That moves the sticks. After a successful fourth down conversion, Jones, he's calling his own number, lowers the shoulder and scores at 7-6 Devils. In the second quarter, same score, Unicoi County is driving. They go to some trickery. How about a double pass? But Chavez's ball is undercut by Cherry, who grabs a big return. Kenny, Unicoi County trailed by two scores in the second half. They went up with under a minute left. But Austin East comes back and scores in the final seconds to take this one. 48 to 43. What a game it was in Irwin. Bradley Central over West Ridge tonight. 42 to zip over on Warrior Hill. Happy Valley trailing Oneida 14 to zip at the half of a class 2A tilt. The visitors are back to pass, but Caden Rector, he's going to sail this one long. And Ron Paul Parker. So you got to watch out for those three names. Watch out for all three names. High points and snags the interception for the Warriors, but they would turn it right back over a few plays later. Kenny, the ball is loose on the snap and Oneida is Kenny on the spot. So uh, they <laughs> go and get a big turnover. Then Rector knocks off a big run and puts him in field goal territory. 29 yards is up and through. Oneida takes the 17-0 lead. Happy Valley looking for a spark. They get it on the screen pass to Joseph Sowards. Number 34. Look at him rumble into big enemy right territory. There. But another fumble would kill mm. the drive a few plays later as Oneida Pitches the shutout tonight in Happy Valley. 17 to nothing is your final. The Warrior season comes to a close. Coalfield over Unica tonight, 63 to 8. And more scores for you. Kingston, another shutout over Johnson County. 35 to 0 as the Longhorn season comes to a close. That's 11 down, five more to go as we make the run to Southwest Virginia. But first, the Virginia High Cheerleaders to help take us to break. Game tonight, Twin Springs. Titans hosted undefeated Rye Cove. The Eagles were leading 22-7 in the third when Titan quarterback Abel Dingus lobs a pass up in the air. Seth Pendergrass goes mm. up and gets it, making a great catch to cut the lead to 22-14. Later, the Titans were driving for the possible tying score. Dingus calls his own number, has enough for the first down, but the ball gets stripped and the Eagles come up with it. In the fourth, Rye Cove would put it away. Carter Roach Hodge, another three name, mm. races in that from nine it. yards out. That made it 29-14 as we go to the board. 
Rye Cove hangs on to win 29-14. Tazewell over Lebanon 58-28. It was also Hurley beating Twin Valley 46-14. A big stone gap tonight. Union hosted John Battle. The Bears were on the move in the first behind running back Keith Chandler, who bounces outside, takes a big hit, picks up the first down. And Chandler would cap the drive with his 13-yard touchdown run. That would make it 7-0 Bears right there. But Battle would answer that score on their first play from scrimmage. Braxton Emerson takes a handoff and he's off to the races, making it to the end zone for this 53. Oh. Beep, beep. There you go. Yeah, really. Meep, meep is he right. He looks like a road runner right there. That would tie the score of 7-7 as we go to the board. Looks like this. Union went on to beat JB tonight, 40-14. to It was Grundy over Wide Central, 44-24. to Patrick Henry over Northwood, 48-8. to And Honeaker beating Royal Retreat, 40-34. to Marion traveled to Bristol to take on Virginia High. Scores 15-13 after halftime. Scarlet Hurricanes with the lead in the ball. Reed Osborne takes the snap, hands it off to Jordan Miller. He cuts up the middle and left everyone else in the dust. 51 yards for the touchdown. Marion takes a 22-13 lead. Bearcats have a chance to respond now. Freshman quarterback Deion Graham hits Logan Slagle on the screen pass. After breaking a couple of tackles, he finds himself wide open on the sideline. He goes 85. Oh. Oh, man, I'm tired. These dudes running a long way tonight. 85 yards for the touchdowns. We go to the board. Looks like this. Marion went on to win 22 to 20, and it was Abington over Lehigh 56 to 43. Nick. Kenny, thanks. Holston coming in to chill Howie tonight. The Warriors started the night with a fireworks show, and let's see if they'll end it with one. It was a defensive battle in the first half. Cavs are able to get the scoring range multiple times. The Warriors defense stopped them every time. Caden Castle gets to the QB on fourth down to force a turnover. Similar story on the other side. The Warriors moving downfield. They can't capitalize. Less than 15 seconds until halftime. Quarterback Asher Chapman rolls to the end zone. He's going to get picked at the five-yard line. It was scoreless at half, but chill Howie wins this one 17-14. Kenny, they're in the playoffs after going 0-10. 10 last season, the 17-14 win, Gate Seam 28 zip over Ridgeview. Finally, Graham and Richland tonight. Folks, what you need to know, Graham still good at football. They go on to dominate Richlands this evening. And Ty Drez Clements breaks Ahmad Bradshaw's rushing record for the G-Men tonight. A huge evening for the folks from Bluefield, Virginia, as Graham goes on to win this one big. Richlands 0-10 on the year. 43 zip is the score. George with 56-7 over Auburn. Castlewood falls to east side 62-6. Hey, that's going to do it for our high school football coverage. Check our website shortly for anything you missed. Stay with us. Kenny wraps up the day in sports when we come back.